If you want to remote into your unified network, you might have tried something like the built-in teleport VPN, which as an admin works pretty good. I just go here in the Wi-Fi Man app, also on the desktop, same thing. A couple seconds, I'm now locally connected to that unified network. I can access any local files, but it does expose essentially the entire network to that remote VPN user. And also it does not have split tunneling. That's why then you might go to something like an open VPN server, which does have split tunneling. And in general, that's what we set up for clients. The issue with that is that we have to remote into the customer's computer and every single other employee they might have that needs VPN access. And then we have to configure a VPN on their computer. But now Unify Identity one-click VPN supports split tunneling. So check this out. In the Identity app, I just tap on that VPN icon. And before I even finish saying that sentence, I'm already connected to that local network so I can access any kind of work files on a server or a NAS securely and not any other files as well. But at the same time, if I go out to the web, YouTube or something, it'll go through my own device's internet connection, not through the office or the remote location I'm remoting into. And that's done all securely with a couple of firewall rules. And I'll show you how to set all this up. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Chaperny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do small business IT. So you just saw how easy it is to use Unify's one-click VPN like for the end user to connect to that VPN. That's why it's called one-click VPN. And this kind of gives you a general idea here as well on the screen, what it looks like on desktop. You just have this little icon and you'll see this VPN option here and then the VPN option as a tile on your smartphone as I showed you. And for the end user to set this up, it's almost just as easy. They just follow a automated email and they can set this up for their computer, smartphone again, very simple to do. So that's why we now use Unify Identity's one-click VPN for those reasons. And also because it's just very easy to manage from the Unify dashboard. And I should mention that this is the free version of Unify Identity Endpoint. There is an enterprise version that can do this and a lot more, but this is about the free version. Now to set this up as an admin for everyone else and or just yourself, you go into the Unify dashboard Although there are some requirements actually. First thing, you do need a Unify Cloud Gateway. Uh, essentially any of these should be fine. I'll have a link for you in the description. The other thing you want to check, so here under, you can just go to dashboard or internet settings. Now I have a fiber connection. That's my primary internet service provider, your ISP here. And you'll want to have, or you'll need a public IP address. So not the private ones, not the ones that start in the 172, 192, 10 dot something for that first octet, but you need a public IP. Um, and I have my Starlink, so this is my backup internet disconnected right now, but something like the Starlink, it uses CG NATs. And what's important to know about that is that the IP address is also not a public IP address. It starts with 100 dot, I forget the range, but I'll have a link for you, Unify's help article. It'll give you a specific range of which ones you cannot use. Basically, you need to have a public IP for this to work. If you don't have a public IP here, you will need something like to do port forwarding on your router upstream, okay, wherever your Unify router is connected to. Or, for example, Unify's teleport will work with CGNAT, for example, with Starlink, okay, just FYI. Now, let's first enable identity, so that's settings, admin users, identity endpoints gives you a quick info here. You could read those terms of service privacy policy, but you need to agree and get started. You could already send this to someone who needs that, but we'll do that later. So for now, by default, it enabled a couple services for us. We will actually disable that. This is all you need for the VPN that you one click VPN on. I'll also disable auto send invitations. This is just meaning as you create users, if they have an email address, it'll automatically send them an email to set up Unify Identity. We don't need that yet. I'll just show you how to do that kind of manually. And expiration seven days, that's fine. Now, if you just end here, you will not get split tunneling. Importantly, you have to go here now to service settings and enable split tunneling, just like it says here. So we don't send all the traffic. People going to like Google, YouTube, they're going to use their own internet connection and not take up bandwidth of the like office, for example, they're remoting into. If you learned something new so far, by the way, please like this video. And now let's keep going. So apply the changes, you can close that out. And from here, we just need to enable the service for the users. 
So you can see you can integrate this with uh, Microsoft, Google Workspace, but let's just go to users. And you should know that all admins are also users in general, and then you can create additional users. But this is me here, and I can just click here or click to assign, same thing. It pops up this user panel straight to settings is where you want to go. And I would need to enable network and one click VPN and just apply the changes. So that's enabled. Now we go to overview and this identity invitation. This is the email that we'll send to the user. So this is that part where you could have had automated as you create users. Let's go ahead and send this. So we can copy, give this link, or go ahead and send that to their email address. Now from the end user's perspective, this is what it looks like. I'm on the iPhone, will be the same thing on the Mac. You literally would repeat the same process if you want to load this on a iPhone or iPad, Windows computer. So they receive this email, in this case it's me. You'll receive it for yourself as well. Now I don't have the app installed, so it should when I just click get started. Yeah, it takes me to the website. It already knows, see right here, it popped up to download the app. So I'll go ahead and click that to get the app. That's just a shortcut to the app store on the iPhone. And now the app's right there. Again, on the computer, on the desktop, it'll just prompt you to install this application through the web browser. So once it's installed, you just click open on that app. We'll click get started. Now it's telling us to go back actually and load that credential. It's back in our email. Then just tap load your credential and verifying. You do need to click allow. Same thing on the Mac, you can allow notifications and then click on the VPN. You do need to allow, this is gonna be all kind of first time things, allow this connection. Okay, and then that first time that's it, it's showing you the VPN icon, we're connected. And if you click on the three dot menu here, you'll see that by default, because we enabled it, it's doing split tunneling. Now, if you want to prevent your users from doing this, for example, going to all traffic, see, and now it's actually routing all the traffic through this VPN tunnel, you can enable some firewall rules for that as well, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute. But by default, if no one changes anything, it should go to split tunneling, which is typically what you want. And on a Mac, generally, it's the same thing. I'm just going to, I already have the app, but I'll click get started. And you'll see at the top, it pops up for me. Here's my site that I'm connecting to. This is why it's named. And again, it should here be split tunneling by default and I can just toggle it on and off, just like that. To further keep this VPN a bit more secure, especially like if you don't want employees to access the entire internal network, you know, maybe they'll need to access the printers, just a, a server or just a NAS, like a specific IP address. We do that with the firewall. So under security firewall, and we'll set up some rules because by default, a VPN, as you see here, zone, which is called here our one-click VPN, we can rename that as well, but right now one-click VPN, it can access, we'll see here, source, source, source is VPN, and it's allow all to all internal zone networks here. Now I should have mentioned actually that when you enable this unified identity endpoints VPN, it does create a wire guard VPN on in the background. So VPN here, you can see VPN server. So one click VPN, you'll see that it's it's called a wire guard. Um, and for example, you can change this to your site name. So when someone connects your VPN, it actually has your site's name on here, for example, something like that. You don't need to say VPN. Now it will not automatically change your public IP. So if you have a backup internet, well, A, like I mentioned with Starlink, it won't work. So for me, it doesn't work in either case. But you would have to update it here if you know you had to switch over, at least with the free unified identity, you have to do that. What I want to show you here that's important, or I think is important, you can go here under advanced manual, and I like to put my own a subnet. So maybe something like kind of VLAN ID 100 or the third octet uh, dot one. That way, anyone who connects any of my devices, they'll get an IP address in this range. And just more easier, more clear to see that when someone's actually connected. So let's click apply changes. Now, if we go to client devices, VPN, you'll see my phone's enabled right here, mobile device, and the IP address is within that IP range that we gave in that VPN wire guard settings. Okay, so let's jump back to the firewall. What I want to do here, uh, and you'll see the Apex One HQ, that's what we renamed the one-click VPN, but it's still sitting here in the VPN zone. 
So I want to prevent anybody on this VPN from accessing the internal network, only the NAS, which is on this internal server network. So we'll see again by default that the VPN, and these are other rules I set up previously, so you'll just see the allow all. Right now it's allowed to access all the internal networks in this internal zone. So let's create a policy. We'll name this something like block any VPN to all internal. Now I'm only doing internal by the way, because the other networks I have here, like isolate, it's already being blocked by default. Uh, that's here in the zone matrix. So anyways, here's our source zone VPN. I could specify which VPN server. So maybe only Apex One HQ, uh, but I'm doing any. We're going to block. What do we want to block? The entire internal zone. Any. Add policy. Proceed. Okay, so now we have, and you see that change is saying it's block all. Because yes, right now my VPN actually won't work. I won't be able to access anything. So we need another rule to allow this one-click VPN to access the NAS. So let's do allow, um, and I'll be specific. I'll call it Unify Identity VPN to NAS. And they have to be on this VPN. I'll allow it return traffic, fine. The network's in the internal zone, and we'll do a specific IP. So here you can just type in the specific IP address of your NAS, for example, or I have it specified as this network object as Apex servers, and then that's fine. So let's add that policy. Well, I should have made this in the other order because now I have to click reorder and the allow needs to be above the block. There we go. Okay, so now we're all secure. I won't be able to reach anything from that VPN except for the NAS. That's good. And you'll see the VPN also to any isolated networks. So any of these, I can't reach those as well. I can go out to the web. So this, by the way, this is where if, you know, a user goes in here and they switch that toggle from split tunneling to all traffic, but you don't want to allow them to do that. You can do a rule here, for example, and write VPN to external create policy, you know, block VPN to internet, basically. And they'll use their own internet, apply that. And you'll see that that will now prevent, even if they enable all traffic, they just won't have an internet connection. So they, they'll understand not to use that, but that prevents them from using the remote sites internet connection. A quick note on that teleport VPN, if you do need to use that for like CG NAT reasons, for example, what you'll notice is that it doesn't really show up here um, in our zone based firewall. However, kind of the trick is you, you can still make some firewall rules because you just need to understand what IP address your teleport VPN devices receive. So I just enabled that on my phone just to see where it shows up. So if you go to client devices and now separately from VPN, you'll see teleport. So there's my phone and now there's the IP address. So you can't control this. They kind of just teleport VPN just picks a subnet and a VLAN ID that's open. And so it's using the number six here. But now you can set up firewall rules, you know, restricting these IP addresses from accessing certain networks and things like that. It's definitely a bit more complicated. You need to be an admin as well, things like that. But what I showed you with Unify Identity is really good for, you know, like employees sending it out to multiple employees so they can work in the office, at home for yourself as well. But if you have something like two sites, then this is not the way you want to go. You actually want to keep those two sites connected, but also securely, and that's called a site-to-site -site VPN. And of course, Unify makes it very easy. They call it site magic. I do have a video here. They can click on the screen to watch that, and I show you how to set that up and securely with the right firewall rules. So I'll see you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video. Take care.